This is a screencast for digital student portfolios and this topic will be on performance portfolios. In his book World Class Learners, Dr. Yong Zhao notes that standardization leads to reduction in creativity and entrepreneurship. Uh, the reason, uh, when you are looking for what I, one right answer, there tends to be a fear of failure. And that fear of failure can lead to a lack of confidence. And confidence is a key to entrepreneurship. So to create more jobs in countries, we need to raise learners. Dr. Zhao does not advocate for individualized instruction where uh, we're designing around learning styles or everyone has an IEP and the kids have total control uh, of learning. He's looking more at personalized learning where we're designing around student needs and interests. We're focused on strengths and we're granting the child the autonomy and choice and they become responsible for their learning. In our school, in our first year, we brought in iPads and it was just a developmental pilot. We didn't have any goals more than just exploring these devices and seeing what they could offer us as a, as a school. The advantage was with our direct instruction, as you can see in my agendas, is we didn't know what we didn't know. So we kind of threw everything into an agenda and, and uh, checked off boxes as we hit, the, hit, hit that list. The disadvantage was there was little ownership in what we were doing. It was also more difficult to connect what we were doing with the context of our classroom. So the verdict was a little bit too much information and just not enough time, too many things to try to cover. In year two, we had it more teacher directed where teachers would sign up for certain tools to teach each other within a certain type of uh, topic, such as digital presentations. Uh, as well, we measured the effectiveness of the training through surveys, through Google Forms, and then based on that feedback, we changed our instruction for the next time. And this time, our technology, because it was a full pilot, was part of our building plan, and technology was assigned its own goal. In our third year, we were able to bring in about four more iPads per classroom, and so we were able to have a full implementation we took the digital learning farm approach uh, advocated by Alan November in his book Who Owns the Learning and the technology was embedded within our academic goals the technology was there to support the learning it wasn't the focus and we really focused on one tool which was digital student portfolios through Evernote to track mastery learning and, and progress so with that in mind What's really key when looking at technology and trying to, to achieve anything is having learning targets. Uh, Connie Moss and Susan Brookhart note that learning targets are use words, pictures, actions, some combination of the three to express the students in terms of the students understand the content and performance they're aiming for. And that's what mastery learning is. It's, it's trying to hit that mark. Uh, what is proficiency, what is mastery, and it's done through a lot of modeling, shared demonstration, guided practice, differentiating the way we teach our content and, and skills, and uh, expecting having high expectations. What's critical is that the students understand the target as much as we do, and that happens through feedback, and in our minds we think feedback happens teacher to student, but in fact the most important feedback according to the authors is that the uh, information coming from the student to the teacher is the type of feedback that will allow the teacher then to alter their instruction and it becomes a partnership they're working together towards an overall goal. One framework that the authors use is the I can framework which I found fairly appropriate and it's structured under two prompts we are learning and I can so what is the content and what is the performance? So in this case, here's an example from the book. We are learning to find proper nouns in a story. The performance, I can read a story and circle all the proper nouns I find. With that, I'm going to show you some examples from a kindergarten classroom. And I want you to think about what the learning target is for this activity. Here we go.
So what was the learning target? What were they learning? And how are they showing what they know and are able to do? An example would be that they were learning the life cycle of a butterfly and they were able to show what they know by using information to create the life cycle of a butterfly. There are variations on this, but uh, that's just one example. So that leads into Evernote and digital portfolios. And what Evernote can do is it helps us become a little bit more paperless and allows us to remember everything. When we think of technology, it's always important with any kind of new learning to think of in terms of frameworks. A good framework that can work for technology is thinking about access. Access, imp access is important. It's a cornerstone of any digital initiative, but without a, a meaningful purpose or an authentic audience, it just becomes another thing in the classroom. In this screencast, we're focusing more on performance. Uh, these are mastery performances. It's about summative assessment, or what Chris Stefani calls game time learning. It's student directed as much as we can. It's about the destination and its assessment of learning. So here are some apps in Evernote that I would recommend that can complement uh, digital portfolios. When you set up an account, uh, use a, your email and then come up with a password. And this is what your home page will look like if you're on an iPad or an iPhone. And these are in notebooks and each student can have a notebook within your Evernote account and these would be their digital portfolios. So you would select go back here you would select edit and then new notebook and then you name it. Uh, each student should have some type of a notebook. Uh, we'll just use the name Jeremy. And then you can create your first note. Um, I would start real simple. Start with something easy. Uh, so click on the paper clip and select a camera and then let's say for example Jeremy had just a really strong reading while he was reading his chapter book during guided reading and you want to document that so we'll take a picture of what he read it'll be embedded in the note and what access can provide is 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 multiple ways to show the students learning not just a test score but an authentic piece so we'll go back to that paper clip and we're going to select the bottom one, audio. We want to actually hear Jeremy uh, read aloud his uh, book that he can read. And it'll start recording Jeremy reading the book. On the bottom you'll see that it's saved. And at this point then you can email it out uh, to the parent that day, that minute, and they can hear their son uh, reading a book and, and celebrating in their success and that's what performance is all about is, is celebrating those successes and, and then thinking about that next step. So just in reflection, when we personalize learning for students, how does this impact both the process and the performance of their work? What instructional strategies such as formative assessment, reflection can be enhanced when embedding digital tools into our learning and teaching? And finally, how does technology and being connected allow our students to showcase their learning in powerful and diverse ways? Thank you.